Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we will be focusing on kinetics of the ribcage. That is basically the muscles that are present around your ribcage and what are the functions that they do. And we will be specifically focusing on the function of the diaphragm and how the breathing is carried about. Apart from this, you can also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of all my notes and also DM me for any queries. Also, if you haven't checked out my previous video on biomechanics of the ribcage and also other playlists that I've made, please check that out. And without any further ado, let's get started. So today as you can see we are focusing on kinetics of your ribcage that is basically the muscles that are present around the ribcage. So before we go on to each and every specific muscle, first let us look at the ventilatory muscles in general. Okay, These muscles are basically present around your ribcage and they help us in breathing. Now they have very specific features. One of it is very high fatigue resistance that means you can say they don't get fatigued that easily. And this is because of their high oxidative capacity. Oxidative capacity means muscles maximal capacity to use the oxygen in microliters per gram of muscle working for an hour. Okay, so it's basically its ability to use the oxygen well. Apart from that, they have voluntary as well as involuntary control. This means as I'm talking to you, I'm not very conscious of my breathing, right? So that is the involuntary control of your breathing muscles as well as voluntary if I want to breathe really deep I can do that right so voluntary as well as involuntary control and also they contract very rhythmically with inspiration and expiration and another point to focus on is what do they work against most of the muscles in our body they work against gravity right see if example my hand is going down now if I have to take it up I have to pull it against gravity but your respiratory muscles they work against your airway resistance okay so if you have to see over here on the screen this is where your airway entry happens correct and your lungs have to expand and do how do they expand when your diaphragm moves down there is negative pressure created and the air comes from high pressure to low pressure and as it's moving there there is also airway resistance right so all these factors your diaphragm has to work against to create that inspiration so the diaphragm and all the other muscles they work not against gravity but against the airway resistance and other factors so before we move on to our names of the muscles first we have to distinguish them between primary muscles and accessory muscles primary muscles carry about the quiet breathing that has diaphragm intercostal muscles and scalene muscles but when we start running and the ventilatory effort increases we have to put in extra effort and that's when the accessory muscles will play an important role and under accessory muscles we have our sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, pectoralis major and minor, subclavius, levator costarum, serratus posterior superior and serratus posterior inferior, transverse abdominis, internal and external oblique and transverse thoracis. Now we will talk about each and every muscle or a group of muscles together in future videos but this video will be focused only on diaphragm as it takes part in 70 to 80 percent of the effort. Okay so let's move on to the next slide. Now coming to our diaphragm first have a look at its insertion and origin. Okay so it arises from your sternum from the ribs on the sides and also from the vertebral bodies. So I mentioned here from sternum, ribs and vertebral bodies and it attaches centrally. So you can see it originates from all the sides like this and then it attaches centrally to the central tendon which is a boomerang shaped. So I mentioned here it inserts into central tendon which is boomerang shaped. Okay, so now how do we divide the diaphragm into different parts? It is based on its origin. So the one which arises from the ribs, the fibers that arise from the ribs are called as the coastal fibers where coastal means ribs. The fibers which arise from your vertebral bodies are called as the crural fibers. So these are the two main fibers. Now if we look at coastal fibers, you can see they go upward, right? And this whole 
zone if you can see which is going upward from the attachments of all the ribs it forms a functional unit together as a whole and this is called as the zone of apposition you can see i mentioned here the zone of apposition which forms a functional unit formed by vertically traveling fibers and on the other side you can see these ones going up from the vertebral body right so the vertebral body has some fibers going up and these are called as the crural fibers okay crural fibers and there are two major crural fibers the right and the left okay arising from l1 to l3 vertebra you can see them over here also they are called as the right and the left crust and on the sides that is the zone of apposition okay so these are the two major fibers and apart from that we have also have medial and lateral arcuate ligaments if you can see over here this pink structure right small those are the arcuate ligaments we have medial arcuate ligament which is closer to the vertebral bodies and we have lateral which are outside over here the medial arcuate body it covers the psoas major you can see the muscle just besides the vertebra right so i mentioned here the arches over the psoas major it arches over it and the lateral one it arches over the ql that is the quadratus lumborum on the outer side okay so these are the ligaments and attachment and insertion of your diaphragm now that we have understood its attachment insertion and what exactly is happening now let's move on to the movement it carries about now coming to the movement of the diaphragm we'll keep it simple first okay first i'll tell you what exactly is happening and then we'll go into the depths simply put the diaphragm will contract and as the diaphragm contracts it goes down okay and as it goes down there is the increase in the abdominal pressure which will stabilize the central tendon of the diaphragm and allow the rib cage to move outward as the diaphragm is moving down which will create a negative pressure inside and the air will come from outside to inside okay so that was in short now let's move on to exactly what is happening first thing diaphragm will contract and it will descend downward right you can see over here it's going down simple then what happens is there is abdominal content which are present below right they will get compressed and because of that compression there will be increase in the pressure in your abdomen right that is the intra abdominal pressure will increase because the diaphragm has moved down and there is compression now as there is compression this compression will stabilize your central tendon we saw that at the center of the diaphragm all the fibers were coming and the tendon was at the center right so this tendon which is at the center will be stabilized because of this increase in intra abdominal pressure now we'll wait over here and look at the other side that is the crural fibers okay now this was done by the zone of apposition right the zone of apposition uh, the muscles over there were contracting the fibers over there were contracting and took down the diaphragm and the central tendon was slightly stabilized because of the increase in intra abdominal pressure what is happening at the crural fibers the crural fibers which are attached to the vertebra on contraction of these fibers the diaphragm will again descend downward correct central tendon will also go down along with that but over here as it goes down there is again increase right there is already been increased because of the zone of apposition fibers now even these will pull the diaphragm even more which will increase the abdominal pressure intra abdominal pressure even more so the increased intra abdominal pressure will be transmitted across the opposed diaphragm that is present over here this pressure will be transferred all over the diaphragm and this will help the coastal fibers to expand even more because now what has happened the central tendon has been stabilized really well right there is pressure in the whole diaphragm but the zone of apposition or the coastal fibers they continue to contract so i have mentioned this over here so this stabilized central tendon and continued contraction of coastal fibers will lift your ribs and move them outward so we can actually try it on ourselves if you see if you try to breathe in with your stomach relaxed the stomach will move out right but if you try to build that pressure in the stomach keep your stomach tight and now inhale with that increase intra abdominal pressure if you try to inhale 
you can see that the ribs move outward right because the diaphragm is pushing the ribs out as it goes down because there is increased intra-abdominal pressure if the intra-abdominal pressure is not there the diaphragm is not able to push the ribs out so that is a very key point that we need to understand coming back over here see we saw that there is increased intra-abdominal pressure from the zone of opposition as well as the crural fibers both of which are pulling the diaphragm down and building up that pressure and this pressure build up along with continued contraction of coastal fibers will lift the ribs up and outward okay so that's what happens at your rib cage now once this happens this will help the coastal fibers expand the lower ribs yeah and it will create a negative pressure now this is a very important point creating a negative pressure because your rib cage has expanded your lungs are there present inside and inside the alveoli there will be decreased intrapulmonary pressure the pressure will be reduced negative pressure will be created inside which will cause air to move from high pressure into the low pressure area so simply put over here you can see there is increase in thoracic size because of this mechanism that we just understood which will cause decrease in intrapulmonary pressure and it will create an active inspiration meaning your diaphragm has gone down actively right it has contracted which will cause the air to come in and that is called as the active inspiration because of the active contraction of the diaphragm now as there is inhalation and the oxygen is being used and the carbon dioxide comes back right over here now we have to exhale and that happens passively so as the diaphragm relaxes now there is no activity of diaphragm it just goes back it into relaxation and as it relaxes the thoracic volume will be reduced and this will be called as passive exhalation not active why because active was when diaphragm was contracting actively and air was coming in but now the diaphragm is relaxing it's a passive thing and that's why from high pressure it's going into low pressure and that's why it's passive exhalation so i hope i made this simple what should you keep in mind in this slide that there are two fibers there is zone of apposition and crural fibers okay the zone of apposition is already pulling the diaphragm down and building the intra abdominal pressure the crural fibers also will pull the diaphragm down which will build the intra abdominal pressure really high and stabilize the central tendon and the whole diaphragm right the intra abdominal pressure will be transmitted throughout the diaphragm right and the central tendon will be really stabilized so that this build up can allow your zone of apposition or you can also say the coastal fibers to contract and continue contracting so that the ribs move outward which will create negative pressure right decreased intrapulmonary pressure due to which the air from high pressure will go into low pressure and create active inspiration and once that happens and when we have to exhale the diaphragm will relax and the air will go from high again back to outside low pressure area that is the passive exhalation so now that we have understood the topic completely let's quickly summarize this first we started with all these muscles that we are going to cover in the next video but we focused on diaphragm right it has high fatigue resistance it has high oxidative capacity it can work voluntarily as well as involuntarily and also it works against the elastic property of lungs and also the airway resistance next under diaphragm we saw its origin from the ribs from the vertebra and from the sternum and it all comes to the central tendon and it inserts into the central tendon majorly it can be divided into coastal fibers and crural fibers right and there are some ligaments which are present in that area and then finally we saw how coastal fibers and crural fibers work together to build the intra abdominal pressure as the diaphragm moves down and stabilize the central tendon and once the central tendon is stabilized with enough intra abdominal pressure the coastal fibers they continue to contract and move the ribs out and this when this happens there is negative pressure or decreased intra pulmonary pressure which creates active inspiration and when we have to exhale the air just passively moves out because of your relaxation of the diaphragm
So with that, we finish off this topic. I hope I made this topic simple enough. If you have any queries, please DM me on Instagram or YouTube and I will be happy to answer your queries. In next videos, we will cover the other muscles that are present around your ribcage. So stay tuned for that and thank you for watching.